might be out of sound. We really check, hope check. that that fixes the sound there. And Hello. now we should be good. All right. That was a rough start this Sorry morning. about that. That's a rough start. But hello, welcome. My name is Ian. And I'm Lauren. And this is our beginner bell and body weight practice. How are you doing today? It's been a crazy week. It's been a crazy month. It's been an even crazier year. Throughout this past year online, I've tried to build up my strength with heavier bells. Today, I'll be taking a step back. That's not a regression forever. It's just to check in. Give yourself the confidence with a light bell. So at this practice, we'll refine the basics and per perform perfect. and perfect those exercises to join Lauren at her crazy class on Tuesday nights. Let's start with our breath. Open up your stance, hand, belly, hand, chest. Four second inhale to the belly. The mouth stays closed on the inhale and on that exhale. Repeat one last time, breath into the belly. And then a slow exhale. Repeat that effort in the chest, breathing in. Belly hand stays calm and exhale. And one more time, breathe into the chest. Expand the ribs and exhale. Return to the belly breath. A four second breath in. And then let's hold that four seconds full and a four second exhale. Also hold empty for four, three, two. One more time, breathe into the belly. Hold full, slow exhale, hold empty. Next we'll breathe into the chest, breath in. Hold full, exhale. Final one today here, breath into the chest. Hold full, and exhale. Add the wiggle, and from here we'll check in with the head, neck, the wrists, and everything else that carries us to those feet. At the head, neck, start with a rotation, looking, towards the right, then look up the wall to center, crown of head high, and pull the chin low. Chin then scrapes the clavicle, looking the other direction to the left, looking up, returning center, pulling to center neutral. There's a lot of distractions going on outside these walls. Are we doing this okay here? We're switching yeah, directions? Yeah, keep going. We're going up. Up. Going up, then look over to the wall, the chin tuck, the scrape at the collarbone to center. Then up through center one last time, looking over to the right, down the wall, connect the chin to the clavicle and return to the center. From here, go hands across your chest. Keep the head forward and hips forward. You might modify your stance to be wider. That might be helpful. And keeping the hips forward with the bum squeeze, the head forward with the eyes for one or two more repetitions, gentle rotations, return center. Next, as if the hips were a bowl of punch and a ball on top, let's oscillate that rib cage as we flex laterally return center, and then flex the other direction. Stay in your cylinder. Avoid dipping out of your cylinder. Last time, returning center. This time, do the same thing. Bend in the cylinder, and then perhaps continue to bend spilling out. Then pull to center, repeat to the other side. Stay tight first. Then, nice and slowly, we could spill out of that cylinder or bowl, pull down to come up. Shake that out. Let's get into a hinge position, explore the spine one more time. A hinge, feet, <laughs> feet just wider than hips. Place the hands on the knees or the quads, soft elbows could be okay here. Keep the spine nice and long, and at first, the low back or lumbar 
part anterior tip of those hips which is tailbone to ceiling and we're spilling punch out the front then pulling on the abdominals can we flex around that lumbar spine and for a couple more in a row isolate this movement to be exclusively into the low back from there tuck under press away using your muscles to make that happen then in that anterior tip of the hips or tailbone pressing away at the head neck extend looking up and then flex looking toward down repeat one last time as lauren and i are showing here it's only that head neck that's moving now retract those shoulder blades together with a neutral head with our neutral head neck looking at the floor and flex the spine or rounding the upper back then press the sternum forward and a repeat for a couple more repetitions. Whenever we watch ourselves on video, Lauren says I use my head more than I claim to. It's so hard. But for last repetition here, pull through the rib cage, extend that sternum forward, minimizing the head neck, and extend. We'll come back to those hinge positions in a little bit. Anything else to add to that warm up, Lauren, as we go? Um, no. No? Well, I'd want to do our feet still. I want to do our hips and our feet. That's right. Yeah. Hips and feet. So that was a trick question. You take it over. It was a trick question. All right. To our hips and to our feet. We'll grab the balance aid. So we'll grab that chair that's just off to the side there, bringing it out so you can maintain your focus on your hip circles versus your balance. Right now, we'll extend our single leg out to the front. We'll open it up in that external rotation or inseam up, and then we'll internally rotate in it, hiding that inseam. We'll come back to center. From that pointed foot, flex your foot, pulling the foot to the shin. Go back to the pointed foot and take that leg around to the side. In that side position, same thing. Internally rotate, hiding the inseam. Externally rotate, showing it. Then go back to a neutral place so that knee's kind of pointing forward. Flex the foot, point the foot, and continue that circle all the way around the back. Roll over the foot, bringing it underneath you. From here, we'll do that one more time a little smoother. To the front with a pointed foot, opening up into that external rotation or inseam up. Draw that perfect circle to the side. When you get to the side, press your hips forward as you turn your leg in, reach around to the back, roll over the foot, pulling and growing tall. Let's repeat to the back, reach along out the back, with the hip staying forward, open that leg in its socket as it comes to the side. Bring the leg all the way around to the front and pull underneath, growing tall. Relax that, shake it out, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Standing tall, nice moves. Standing tall on that inside leg, point to the front. Again, externally rotate first, inseam up. Internally rotate, inseam down. Then back to center. Flex the foot, point the foot, inseam forward or up, draw the circle to the side, pressing your hips forward. Internally rotate or hide the inseam, externally rotate, showing it. Come to a neutral place where the knee is forward, flex the foot, point the foot, continue the circle around the back. Reaching long with the back, staying square forward, roll over the toes underneath. To the front again, front, inseam up, draw that leg to the side, pressing those hips forward. Once it's at the side, turn it down or in. As you reach around to the back, rolling over the toes, pulling tall. Once out the back, long to the back, point. Hips are square forward as that leg rotates in its socket and comes around to the side. All the way around to the front, and pull underneath, growing tall. Check that out. Nice. Probably staying close to your balance aid as we get through a couple balances here, or in space if you want to be trickster. Knees, press over toes. And then drive into the floor, growing tall, pulling your kneecaps up, squeezing your glutes, bracing your core. Do that again. Knees, press over toes. Roll through that flat put foot position to press into a two foot balance. Hold on as needed. Now, most important, control your eccentric or your down phase. 
right? Eccentric, did I use that word right? Depends and what down. muscle you're talking about, but yeah, generally, yes. Good. Then we'll reverse that. We'll go up first to use your aid as needed. Knees will press forward. Shoulders will stay over top of hips. Heels will come towards the floor, trying to stay the same height, and then drive into the floor to extend to tall. Nice, let's turn out. Do that same thing from that first position. So squeezing those butts to add that little bit of turnout, your safe range. Pulling together, we're pressing our knees over our toes first, staying tall and stacked. And then driving into the floor to extend. Repeat again, knees press towards over toes. Pull together to extend, roll up and find that balance. Here, inseams are trying to face forward. Kneecaps are pulled up, boots are squeezed, core is braced. Now slow down, three, two, control the landing. This time press to up first, then knees are gonna go towards over toes. Heels will find the floor and press to extend to tall. Nice, we have one more position, point to the side. Toe ball, heel, land. Knees drive over toes as you feel that pull together under you and then drive down and away to stand tall. Repeat, pulling together and then pressing away and growing up to find your balance. Hold, knees stay straight as the heels find the floor. Good, go back up. From here, knees dry over, over toes, heels come down and then gently press into the floor to extend to tall and shake that out. Nice, now it's KB time. Oof. Before those KBs, let's get one more quick version of those shoulders because I may oh. have skipped over that as part of that warm up. Oops. A quick AWTY series to improve the stability of the shoulder blades and the mobility of that ball socket. I like that wide stance for this with the palms facing forward, elbows straight, elevate the shoulders lightly as to shrug, I don't know, and then pull them down. Then retract, squeezing the shoulder blades together and now from this armpit position here, drive that shoulder blade forward into protraction. Retract once more, and then bend those elbows to end up in our W. In the W, straight lines through those hands, avoiding the excessive wrist extension. Elevate the shoulder, shrug, pull down. Then retract, squeeze, and from again those armpit positions, scoop that shoulder blade around the rib cage, pressing forward, then retract. Stay in the W or extend those elbows out to the T. And in the T, we'll elevate or shrug. And from those armpit positions, pulling low, supporting the arm from underneath. Then retract yet again, squeezing shoulder blades together and continue to drive those armpits away to support the arm. Retract. Last time, come back to that W, excuse me. And from here, either approach your T again or challenge it towards the Y. As the armpits pull low, the elbows extend towards your Y shape at the top. Fully straighten those elbows, bring the biceps towards the ears as allowed. And again, one last time, elevate shrug, pull down, retract, that's a toughie, and protract, driving forward from that armpit. Then pull the elbows to the ribs, Finish with the palms forward and then shake out. Right on. Missed that in a little bit of the earlier warm up, but before we hold those kettlebell loads or use those arms in our get ups, let's just check in and make sure that they're feeling all good for today. All so right. we do have, go ahead. We do have our kettlebell loads. I have mine off to the side here and we'll use it today first by picking it up and holding it in that suitcase position. We often do that for 20 to 30 seconds here in this practice on your own, maybe build up that strength and endurance to hold it for a full minute. But here we'll utilize that hinge we warmed up as you move through our spine. And then with our vertical shins, we'll place one hand on the bell, but first open up the shoulders so they are not parallel with the floor. Check. Then pull on the kettlebell lightly to square up your shoulders to the load and the floor. Let go. Come up barehanded and switch. Hinge, single hand on the bell, 
And for this moment, oversell that the shoulders are not square or parallel with the floor. Then pulling on the armpit, connecting to the kettlebell, rotate or pull the rib cage and spine to parallel with the floor. Let go and come up. Set up those preloading strategies like squaring up shoulders and feeling that load connecting to the shoulder, to the hip, to the core and the glutes. 20 to 30 seconds, here we go. Setting up our hinge, single hand on, shoulder square across the front. Feel the preload, drive to tall and feel free to modify your stance. No matter which stance you choose, the feet are pressing into the floor and we're avoiding the load being too heavy. Modify this load. If we cannot hold ourselves in our nice sharing up and down posture, modify that load or decrease your time. Let's hold for a couple extra seconds with bum cheek, squeeze and firm, core brace, and always breathing. Open, hinge, keep those shoulders square, let go. Wiggle and breath. One more time on the other side. Hip hinge, hand on the bell, are those shoulders square? Preload, drive tall, address your stance with modifications, and again, staying tall like Lauren, avoiding the side bend like me. From here, I'll recruit the side away from that kettlebell to help support the load, and Lauren has her nice hand out front adding for some stability. The feet are pressing in the floor, the glutes are squeezing, and it's probably been about that 20 to 30, so we'll open, we'll hinge, and we'll come up, Barehanded. They get heavy. There you go. All right, time to get to the floor and then get back up. You got it. But there's only one way to do that. Get up style. That doesn't need a song. All right, arm across your body, pick one. Remember which one. Remember which arm, don't get distracted. Mm. <laughs> you can touch steps back. Is that the song you were thinking of? Yes, control descent to the floor. Nice, front foot opens up, rotate your upper body, then chop that hip back to hinge. Place your hand on the floor, stack your shoulders over top. When you're ready, sweep through, find the elbow, five seconds to the floor. Here we go, five, four, three, two, and down. Same side, come back up. Use that foot to drive into the floor, extend the hip, pull on the elbow. Find your hand, move your foot as needed, pack your shoulder, bridge, sweep, hand leaves floor, hips extend through, front foot moves, both legs to help you up. Nice, don't forget which arm. Goblet. Right back, right back. The goblet hold. Let's cheat clean to our first goblet hold today and we'll go forward with the practice using squats in that goblet holds position. Cheek clean first though, setting up that hinge again. Set up the hinge, place two hands on the bell, pack the shoulders. Take a moment and in this position, are the shoulders as much over top of the bell and your knees as possible. Then gently let go, come up barehanded and shake it out. One last time, and this time we'll clean it to that goblet position. Hip hinge, two hands on, packing shoulders, feel the preload, and lift it up. Pull the shoulder blades together and use the back, the musculature of the back to support the load in the front. Hold it for a couple extra seconds as Lauren's demonstrating just off the chest. Avoid it from resting on the body. Retract shoulders, grip it with the hands, and for five more seconds, Maintain the goblet hold here, and then return it to the floor pretty quickly, but always in control. Add the wiggle and check in with the load. How was the firing range? Excuse me, how was the suitcase hold? How was the goblet? We'll progress with the skills and drills. Check in with your load. Get up number two, I remember my leg. All right. I think. Find your space, other side get up. Cross the arm across the chest, leg you can touch, Control down, four, three, two, soft landing. Front foot opens, add that rotation with the upper body, then chop the hip and hinge. Once that hand's on the floor, make sure you then stack your shoulders over top. Lift the back leg to sweep, 
Find your elbow, five seconds down, five, four, three, two, and land. Same side, get up. Push the foot into the floor, extend the hip, pull on the elbow. Hand, pack shoulder, bridge, sweep. Hand leaves that floor, extending the hip through. Front foot moves, level the hips, and hook to tall. Oh, Shaking yeah. Hip. Oh, yeah. Nice. The well, so goblet, go ahead, sir. I was just going to say, time to add to the goblet. Time to add to that goblet hold. Earlier, we worked on a little bit of squats from the parallel position, from the wider position. Personalize your squat stance. Lauren's legs are different than mine. My stance will be a little bit different than hers, and that's okay. Groove your position up to five repetitions of our goblet squat. Let's get into it today using that cheek clean. So it'll be a top-down movement here. Stand over top of your bell. Utilize that hip hinge. Two hands on and pull to the goblet. I will adjust my stance as needed. Take our breath in at the top. Pull ourselves low and up, down to the tall. Breath in. Up, core brace. Breath in. Up, core brace. Breath in. Up, and I believe one more. Yep. To tall. Change your feet. Hinge the bell. <laughs> and then back to Lauren for the get up. And then what's next? All right. Place your bell in a not far away. We're going to get up down and then we're going to hold it while we're down there. Let's go back to that first side you did. First side. Leg you can touch. Drop back. Five second descent. Five, four, three. Pressing that back hip forward. Good. Front foot opens. Use your rotation. Chop to hinge. Stack those shoulders. Then sweep through. Find the elbow. And with control, keeping the shoulder packed, find your back. Nice. Adjust as needed to get closer to your bell. We're going to hold our bell. You have two options here. You can either, let me show you, watch. Option one, cuddle, roll, press. Spend your time in firing range holding. Hold, 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 hold. Two hands, cuddle. Option two, I feel good about my firing range. I want to get some presses in. I'm going to pull the bell down, keeping my elbow tight to my body and my vertical forearm to hopefully tap the floor. Brace, press back to stacked. One to five of those presses, and then we'll pull down and do the same thing you picked on the other side. We're gonna do two sets of this today. So if you choose the first time to do firing range, you could press the second time or you could do two sets of presses, or you could do two sets of firing range. Really, you choose. The what world you is your oyster. What are you doing? Um, what are you doing? <laughs> Either. <laughs> I'll press. Okay. You wanna press, I'll hold. I'll hold firing range. I'll press then. I'm holding, Ian's pressing. Cuddle, two-handed roll. We all have to press to get it to that firing range position. If you're with Ian, you're packing that shoulder rooting the feet in the floor, pulling the bell down with that vertical forearm and pressing. Don't forget to pr use your whole body tension when you're pressing from the floor. Your butt still helps you, your core still helps you. How many are you at? This is one more for five. Last one here. And then everybody with two hands, pull that bell down and cuddle it over. Great. Whatever decision you make, you have to do the same thing on the other side. So spin yourself around. Assume your cuddle position on this side, hand gripping the bell, two hands on, roll to your back and double handed press. Adjust as needed, find that stability and go ahead and press if you're pressing. Nice. I see that vertical forearm over there. I see a shoulder pack matching that breath a bit with that on the up, finding that stability. I'm also working on keeping my shoulder packed and my wrist straight stacked over top of my elbow. Two hands, bell pulls down, cuddles. All right, we have to stand back up. So on the side we came down with, which was the original side of today, use that hip drive, pull to the elbow. Find your hand, bridge to lift, and sweep under. 
pressing the floor away, extending the hips, front foot moves, squaring up, both legs to help you up. Whew. Awesome. Until next time, let's squat. Sets of squats. So set two of squats here. There might be three sets total. Oh, surprise. Perhaps grab, excuse me, perhaps increase that number of repetitions. If you start at three, add one more. Or if you start at five like us, keep that consistent, consistent effort and in integrity of the movement as we squat. Keep squatting. Keep squatting. Let's set it up using that hip hinge for today again. Two hands on, packing shoulders Oops. and zip. Modify your stance, breath in and up, one. Breath in, nice and control, and up, two. Breath in, up, for three, sniff, and up, four. Last one, for five. I change my feet, hinge pretty quick. And then it's already Ooh. back to Lauren. Already. All right, we're getting back to the floor with a get up and then we'll either perform our firing ranges or our presses again. Other arm across chest, leg you can touch. Drop back lunge, square those hips up, control. Front foot, add your rotate, chop to hinge, stack the shoulders, then sweep, elbow and press away from that elbow to keep the lat engaged to find your back. Maneuver yourself over to your bell. Decide what you're going to do. Are you going to do the same? Are you going to do different? I firing range last time. I decided I want to press this time. You're doing the same? Hope so. All right. Cuddle. Roll. Press. Either stay here in your firing range position or engage that lat. Pull the bell down towards the floor up to press. One to five presses here. Feel the glutes still, the feet drive into the floor. Last one. At the top, pull down with two hands and roll to finish. Oh, I like that floor press. Getting under that load can feel really good. I feel really scary too. Floor press. The floor press. All right, other side. Cuddle. Two-handed roll, two-handed press to get that bell up in the range position. Get everything tight. When you're ready, engage to pull down, up to press. Still bracing your core, still having tension and muscles run through those legs, obviously. And last one, bell pulls down with control and roll to your side. From here, that second arm across our body. Drive, pull on the elbow. Find your hand, bridge to lift, sweep, press the floor away, extend or move that front foot, and hop to tall. Hop to tall. Hop to tall. There we go. Ian said you need one more set of we'll get up, set up one squats. Last, one last set of squats here. After this set of squats, let's just perform one body weight get up, down and up on each side again. Or if you know that you can press it and do with the load, you could do that too. But again, body weight for this practice. Wow. One last set of squats, promise it's the last set. And as Lauren said, let's just squat. Take your breath, brace your control, five reps as a max. Hinge, preload, and cheat clean. Take a breath into the top, and a sharp hop on the up. Breath in and in and use that brace. Fire up for safety and stay strong. That's five. All right, Lauren, one more time. Down and up, both sides. Okay. Arm across your body. If you want to practice that overhead position, you can, but make sure that arm stays in your overhead position in every move. Leg you can touch, drop back, control the down. Open, rotate, hinge, stack and brace, sweep through to the elbow and control to your back. Back up, same side. Press the floor away, pull on your elbow. Find your hand. Bridge, sweep, hand leaves four, hips extend, 
Push down and out and down and back to help yourself up. Switch sides. Free leg, steps back. Control the down. Open, rotate, hinge. Stack your shoulders, sweep through. Find your elbow, control to your backside. Once you're there, back up, hip drive. Pull, hand, bridge, and sweep. Hand leaves the floor, front foot moves, grow to tall, <clears throat> shake it out. Nice, that was like one, two, three, four. Almost at eight, eight get, get ups, ups, right? Yeah, eight get ups, 10 get ups, awesome stuff. One get up every day, mm -hmm. awesome stuff. Get up, get out. Swings. Swings. Worked on a little bit of that strength. We're always moving there, a little bit active rest in between, but working on some nice strength sets here. Now, working on some endurance in this I go, you go fashion of kettlebell swings. Watch for a second as Lauren or I oh, describe yeah. me describes or shows, and Lauren describes five swings. Mm -hmm. All right, for our kettlebell swings, we assume the hinge position with our hands on the bell. When we're ready, we'll pull to hike. Hips extend, driving that bell through. Noticing Ian's playing a little game of chicken on the way down, so trying to stay tall until, whoop, got to move. Through and park. It's that ballistic hinge we're after with that plank position at the top. If you're ready for it, great. If not, try some deadlifts. Let's go. This Hingy. I go, you go away. Oh, showing the deadlift. I'm just showing the My deadlift. Yep. So the deadlift precedes the swing. But that hip hinge, like we did in the warm up, precedes that. Take your time, build your groove, and be patient as you pursue your strength workout. Let's do one bodyweight drill first. Lauren mentioned that chicken game, chicken or that timing drill of the sway. With your arms up in front of you, gently reach forward so your blades round. Now don't bend your elbows, pull your blades back. Good, that's where they should be at the top of your swing. From here, your arms are gonna fall, you're not gonna move. Your arms are gonna fall, don't move, don't move. Oh, better move. Press your hips back, keep the bell tight or your hands tight to the zipper of your pants. Now, start extending your hips, hands are still on you, hands are still on you. Whammo, that's when the bell starts to rise. At the top, pause, we obviously would not do this with a kettlebell. Pause here, where are your shoulder blades? Could they retract more? Let's do it again, arms start to fall. Don't move, don't move, move. Hinge, reaching back, load it up, drive into the floor, extending, whammo, float. One more time, where are the blades? Retract them, arms will fall. Don't move, move. Hips go back, drive them into the floor, extend through, pop. Bell floats, check in at the top. My shoulders are so good. Good job, let it go. Nice. Body weight drills, they can help perfect that swing. Laura and I have been practicing kettlebells for mm, eight to 10 years, and we are still looking for that perfect swing. So be patient, swing for five for today in this I go, you go fashion. I guess it is a, a truly I go, as I'll go first here. Ian five goes. swings, five swings, that's what we're looking for you're, here. You're swinging here with one of us. If you're with Ian, you've started. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. You started your first round of five swings here with Ian. And once he parks the bell, I'll go. So Team Lauren's about to start. Give yourself rest. That one-to-one -one work rest ratio that we're working for here today allows you the chance to check in, see some good form, say, hey, I could do that again for five, or Team just Ian. watch. Team I, go. Five swings. Keeping that plank position at the top so our glutes are squeezed, our core is braced. Oh, that came quick. Those rests do come quick. But those cues Lauren said of the feet rooted, the core braced, and the timing drill to stay safe and strong. Hmm, round Set three. Set three already. By the way, we're going to five sets of this. Set five three. Five sets today. Round three here. Noticing that Ian and myself hopefully are still keeping that deep hinge through all of our swings. It's not getting shallower. It's still 
hips back. Those hips back. So for those who are watching, we can see that Lauren's hips are reaching through that doorway behind her. We can see how tall she is lined up against the frame and in the hinge, the butt's halfway through the door. Round four or five here. Whether you're patting me in your deadlift, patterning your shadow swing, or swinging with us, stay strong to the end. <sighs> Heavy feet, grip and toes, and you can hear Lauren's breathing match the <sighs> on that effort part of the swing. In our practice, I do sometimes tell little white lies. So we've done four sets of five. Do one more set of five if that's for you, or join us for one set of six, seven, eight, nine, or 10. I'll be doing 10. Add one or two, here we go. All right, team me in last round. Anywhere from five to 10 swings here to finish it out. No matter what number you choose, make sure that last one is just as strong as the first one. Breathing, keeping the core braced breathing under the shield, and putting Ooh. down with control. Oh, Lauren said all the good cues. I'll say them again because you can never hear them enough. It's the shield of the abs, the timing of the hinge, and the strong foundation rooted to the floor. Start strong, finish stronger, and a couple more reps, you're done. Park it, and we'll slow down with the breath. It's harder for team Lauren here. Let's take a quick moment, hand belly, hand chest, Big, excuse me, big breath into the belly, fill it full, and then slow exhale. Repeat one more in the belly, four seconds in, and slow exhale. Stress, same effort in the chest, four seconds in, four second exhale. One more time, chest. Four seconds, exhale. Now one more big belly breath in. And eight second, exhale. And breathe. Hmm. Ah. Some stress, some relaxation, and that opportunity to check in and say, hey, I can do that again next week. Promise no more swings for today. We did I go, you go, we finished with our little breath. Let's finish with a good old fashioned stretch on the floor. Stretch on the floor. We did floor. some squats. This drill here is called the frog. The frog. And some people love it. Some people hate it. It burns those fire zone, those adductors. Be polite, bring the floor up, like on that chair, if it's a little bit too aggressive down low. The pillow out front might be enough to help as well. So Lauren, just give us a good old fashioned frog here. Placing your hands on the floor, your knees on the floor. You're gently gonna start stepping your knees out wider than your shoulders. Once you find a nice, comfortable place, you're also- Might change day to day. You're also going to flex your feet. So your toes will be, or your foots will be pulled to your shin. And if you go check out your shins by looking down, are they perpendicular to your quads? Meaning are they parallel or running, you know, vertical, horizontal really. Anyway, from here, you I'm might stay on your hands because that might be enough for you. You might find your elbows. No matter which position you're in, now let's think about our tailbone. Is our tailbone tucked under rounding that lumbar? If so, let's gently try to tilt the tail towards the ceiling, which yes, I'm trying to do whether you can see it or not, I don't know. I'm trying to tilt the tail to the ceiling as if to spill my punch bowl out my belly button or my punch would leak out the belly button there. With that tail tilted to the ceiling, I'm gonna breathe. Try to find some comfort and space in this. And then I'm here and I'm just kind of moving my hips or my pelvis in a little bit of a circle. One way and a circle the other. It's not a lot of movement. Just trying to find rooms in those socket joints. Maybe you stay. Maybe you try to wiggle your knees out one millimeter further. Retilt the tail to the ceiling. Now this time could be sit back a little bit you might have to move your elbows with you as you press down, which what this would be your squat position. Standing, breathe. Gently rock yourself forward out of that. Slowly bring your knees back underneath you. Ugh. Yeah. Press the floor away. And say good day. Good day. Good Those day. little subtle movements that Lauren cued with those 
frog stretches. Woo, they feel like big work. Little movements, big work, big yield, staying strong. Thanks for joining us today on our Big Beginner Bell class. Tomorrow morning is our bar class at 8.15 a.m. And Friday, our beginner bar or restore and recharge. My name's Lauren. I'm Ian. Stay strong, take care, keep swinging, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.